Hi there, welcome back to ADSR Machine Tutorials. Make sure you get yourself subscribed to our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash ADSR Tuts. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you a workflow technique using Machine inside Logic Pro X and show you how to route audio from these individual channels in Machine into their own separate channel in Logic so we can process the sound in Logic, but I'm also going to show you how we can export our MIDI sequence or our MIDI pattern that we have in Machine here and export that onto Logic's Arrange. So then we can use Logic's Arranger to arrange the tracks rather than trying to arrange the tracks using scenes in Machine, which is not necessarily as intuitive as using Logic's Arranger. And also if we've got separate audio tracks or sampler instruments in Logic and then we're trying to match up an arrangement with scenes in Machine and the arranger in Logic, it can get quite confusing. So I've seen a couple of tutorials using Ableton and, and the workflow with Ableton and Machine and stuff and in Logic it's slightly different so I thought it would be a good one to do show you Logic users how you can kind of get this workflow going with Logic and Machine. So for starters we need to convert Machine into an audio into a multi output. So you may have done this to begin with when you loaded Machine into Logic but I have this sequence here and what I did was I booted up Logic, I inserted Machine as a sampler instrument and then I just started jamming away with some sounds and what I didn't do we set machine up as a multi output. That doesn't actually matter when you're using it inside Logic. I don't know what it's like with Inside Live or other doors, but I can simply just go to Machine 2. I've got it as a stereo app at the moment, convert it to multi output. It may take a second to kind of reboot machine. But it's now rebooted it as a multi output, and I've still got the exact same project going. <laughs> So once we've converted to a multi output in Logic, we get this plus sign on the this is the the channel strip that has machine loaded onto it here and we've got this plus sign for multi output. So what we can do here is let's look at our project in machine. We've got these are the drums and a vocal sample. We've got eight tracks there. I'm not using group B, group C is our synth sound or our chord sound. So I've got nine tracks basically that I want to route from machine through the mixer in Logic. So let's add nine auxiliary tracks here. One to nine. Just using that plus button we can add them in there. So now if I go to this first sound here, the kick drum, what I want to do is, we've got this plugin icon here, above that we can start to route input and output and macros and grooves and stuff like that. So with this output setting highlighted, I basically want to send this kick externally and into the mixer in Logic and I can do this here with this destination and I don't want to send it to external one because that's going to bring it back down this same channel here where we've got machine loaded. I want to send it to its own separate channel here so I'm going to go external 2. So if we look at this auxiliary channel now, auxiliary 1, we should be getting the kick drum down here. And the level is far too hot there and if I go back into machine the level's too hot really coming out of the machine anyway, but if I pull this fader down, it's not going to affect what's happening in Logic there, because basically what's happening in from, from machine is the audio is getting sent straight from this mixer channel into Logic, so it's bypassing the group level and it's bypassing the master output and going straight into Logic. So what we need to do really here is using shift highlight all our sounds and bring them down together and it's important to, to bring them down together so we've got that same I kind of set up a bit of a mix here you can see the level is slightly different all these sounds so I don't want to lose the mix that I've got going on there so now getting a bit more of a nicer level coming into Logic and I want to do that and maybe turn them down about 5 dB or so 
I want to do the same really for this synth sound so that remains like a, a nicely mixed level in comparison to the drums so we can go back to our externals now and start rooting the clap can go external 3 the closed hi-hats can go external 4 because I had everything highlighted there I've actually started rooting them all to external 4 obviously I don't want to do that so quickly change that external 2 external 3 closed hats external 4 the open hats external 5 second open hat there external 6 tambourines external 7 a little bit of a percussion hit external 8 a vocal external 9 and go over to our chord external 10 so now if we look at this mixer take that solo off we've got all our drum sounds and our synth sound coming through the mixer in Logic so what we want to do now is we want to get the MIDI out of here as well so we can start triggering this in Logic and then we can start arranging out this sequence so I notice within live these are the MIDI and audio icons here you click and drag the MIDI icon and you drag it onto your mixer and it creates clips for each individual MIDI part from all of your sounds it's slightly different in Logic so drag this MIDI pattern, if I drag this onto the arrange page like so might take a second to load all of these instruments up and what it's done here it's just created logic instruments for all of these MIDI parts which is obviously no use to us at all really we want our drums coming down on the arrange page there so let's delete all of those what we need to do for starters go back to our mixer and these auxiliary channels that we've set up here highlight all of these it's quite an important stage of the process here you need to go to options create tracks for selected channel strips so if we hit that all our auxiliary tracks are now showing up on the arrange page we can see the levels coming through there so what we need to do now is route the MIDI from machine into logic and then we can drag our MIDI parts onto the correct auxiliary channel so if we start off click and drag the MIDI pattern like we did before onto the arrange page move it to the start here what we need to do if we solo this channel 1 here, this is the kick drum so we're just going to get the kick playing back here and if we go back to machine take it off this scene so it's just going to play an empty scene so we're not triggering so we're not triggering these patterns from machine anymore it's only going to be getting triggered from logic so we go to an empty scene and we're triggering the kick drum which is great but if I go to auxiliary 2 I'm still triggering the kick drum it's because I've got the kick drum highlighted here if I go to the clap yeah it's great I'm getting the clap now but I'm also getting the clap on auxiliary 1 so what we need to do is change the MIDI input on Logic so everything's got its own separate MIDI channel 
uh, rooted into logic and then we're going to be able to trigger these sounds properly so auxiliary one which is the kick drum we need to go to input MIDI active and we can just check on this auxiliary channel here MIDI channel 2 let's route it down MIDI channel 2 so now regardless of what we have selected in machine we're getting that kick drum do the same for all the other sounds now so the clap active channel 3 closed hat channel 4 open hat channel 5 and so on 6 channel 9 so now take the solo off got all our sounds in there I actually also need to get this kind of MIDI pattern from group C, the synth sound. So let's do the same thing here. We can just drag and drop this MIDI onto our MIDI channel down here, auxiliary 9. Go back to this empty scene inside machine and then activate the MIDI input, MIDI channel 10. got a chord sound. It's also mapped across the keyboard as well so we want to change some of the sounds in Logic, use, use Logic's piano roll to edit that kind of MIDI pattern, we've got it in there. So now you can just go ahead and start arranging your track. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. I hope you found it useful and any of you people who are wondering how to get a nice workflow going with Machine 2 software and Logic Pro X, hopefully that's helped you there. Any questions, please get in touch. And also make sure you get yourself over to our website, machineskills.com. Tons more tutorials using Machine 2.0 software. And yeah, thanks for watching. All right, cheers. Bye.